We get plenty of those in Texas. All right, so put your hands out in front of you and uh, kind of just look out across. I wouldn't recommend looking at a person. Look at a thing where, you're, where your vision is kind of fixed for right now. And I want you to start to wiggle your fingers. And I want you to slowly move your fingers out as wide as you can, as far as you can go until you can just barely see them wiggling. Sophie, you can see your fingers back that far, I am amazed. Bless you all. Now I want you to take your fingers and keeping them as far out as possible, go down. Keep looking out across at that other item. And then you can bring them around and go up. And now you can drop your hands, but stay kind of with your eyes fixed on that spot so you stay in wide angle vision. Now if you do that, you can see a great amount of movement that happens around you, like the wiggling of the hands, Mike lifting his right leg, a knee over here going, then another bend happening here, more hands over here. This one. You will be the rhinoceros thundering through the woods. And I will laugh at you. I uh, hear that guy coming. Over there. I can't see him, but I know he's over there. So, so you want to make sure you do what you can to minimize your sound. And having small steps will be a really important key to that. So you spent your life so far thundering about not really caring what you step on because it's not going to hurt you. So for this camp, a lot of your time is spent barefoot. So that way you can't be oblivious to the earth beneath you. You will have to know what you're stepping into. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So make sure that you're moving carefully. So to prevent the rash, we have these plants called jewel weed, and we're going to talk more about this this week, I think. It's a, there's a patch of it growing in that moist area down there. Remember when you guys were stepping in the mud and going, it's mud. Or some of you guys like, this is awesome, so cool. Yeah. Remember that place? Yeah. That's where the jewel weed grows. It's kind of like poop. Well, <laughs> poop you do right? walking and poop barefoot. Yeah. You do that often? Change your life. <laughs> I'd like you to just listen to me talking right now. And I'm going to keep this same volume. I want you to take your hands and make cups out of them like you're about to try to collect some water. And I want you to put your thumb against the skin right behind your ears and then push your ears forward. So now that you're cupping your ears toward me, turn your cuffs and you're actually covering your ears like this. There you go. <laughs> put your thumb right against oh, the back you. of your ear. Okay. Okay, keep your fingers pointing to the sky or at least kind of this way. You don't want to point them down because then that covers up your ears. We're trying to make our ears bigger. And it's really great for when you do hear someone in a distance, because it helps you pinpoint things. So if you hear a deer in the distance, but you're not sure about the crunching sound, if you're sitting out there and you want to be able to see something, but you don't know exactly where it's coming from yet, 
you can kind of pinpoint where the noise is coming from by cupping ears. In fact, I'm not going to talk for a moment. I want you just to listen, and when you hear a sound, whether it be a bird sound or an insect sound, I want you to really turn and try to tunnel in on where you hear it coming from. You're going to put sneakers around him, and you want to go up, grab a sneaker without getting noticed, and then get all the way back out of the circle without getting noticed. They can't see you, they'll be able to hear you. So you've got to fox walk real quiet. So from here to me. You got someone. Yep. All right. Continue. Sit back down. Still frozen. Chris can take a seat. Okay. Okay. Go. And again. Right here behind the tree, just you'll see me right. You gotta come out. Braden, would you actually show me where that is and I'll pick it up? What? Would you show me where that bottle is and I'll pick oh, it up? Sure. Alright, Noah. Okay, slow. But I can't really no. see who it is. And then there's a head behind them the tree. Yep. And they just come move up. behind the tree. White shirt. Yep. Parker. Mr. Mr. There's someone behind that tree because I just saw them move their arms. Got you. Oh. But you were in a great spot. It was your movement right there. Did he move? Is that what you what? saw? What I did know you I see? saw his shirt. Saw his pants? Oh, I saw sure. His shirt. I saw his jeans. That was the part that stuck out more to me. I said, great job. Don't thunder through. I don't want you to hurt your feet. Although you move like you don't care, which is awesome. All right. Close your eyes. Cover them. Cool. Wolves, you only have two more chances to get up here. One, two. Well, well, you got to work on it more. You can't just you can't just decide that it's bad and walk off. You have all the materials right here to make it. You just got to put them in the right order. Our fire lit, but it went out. Should we get a little bit more to put on top? No, just of the little that stuff? That hasn't even burned yet. Good you got fire really good. Good. Can you light that? One of these times has never laid that out by any Just don't Woo! don't keep building it. Just let it let it burn down Just from where it's going right now. It's okay. Put your green. Holy name works. Don't put the wet stuff on. We got first fire. Put on the wet. Woo! Guys, wait. You can see what happens to the fire as soon as you put it down. You put that wet stuff on and knock it right down. Oh yeah, big derby. Big derby. Yeah, this is about I'm on the other side of that. Hard hard don't do that. Come on, just go there. That's what you need. You don't, don't do that. Don't do that. We need to put wet stuff on it. You're looking at it. You got it. You got it. Just leave it. Let it do its thing. Yeah, look how high it is.
See what's around you. Go slow and pay attention to your feet. Take your right hand out. Your, your right hand. There you go. Pick your left hand up. Boom. Follow that one. So, first man arrived on this earth, he had no idea what he was supposed to do. He just kind of walked around, and he looked at things, and he wondered about how they worked and how he fit into this whole thing, because he had no one to talk to about it. And one time, he's just kind of stumbling about midway on his first day, and he comes upon Mao Shop. Now, Mao Shop was the creator of these good things on this planet according to the Wampanoag. And so he looks at Mao Shop and he's busy working at creating something. And so the first man comes up, he goes, Hey, do you know who I am? And Mao Shop says, Oh, first man, I've been waiting for you to find me. I wanted to tell you about something here, but I don't have time right now. I'm right in the middle of getting the correct design for this butterfly with you. So you need to go and ask your grandmother what your purpose is here. And he goes, oh, I have a grandmother? And he was so excited and immediately filled with love for his grandmother. Because who doesn't love their grandmother? The best part is, since he was first man, he didn't even know what grandmother was. So he just filled himself with love and got excited, didn't know. So he goes, well, how do I find this grandmother? And the mouse shop smiled and he goes, well, she lives in the lodge right across the river, so you need to go down this hill and you'll find her. And he goes, oh, okay. And he goes to take off and he immediately comes back and he goes, what's a river? <laughs> don't worry. You run down this hill and you'll find it. Just go across it and you'll find her lodge over there. She lives there. Okay, I'll do that. So he goes running down this hill. And when he reaches the river, he thinks it will be just like the rest of the earth. So he just tries to run across the top of it. This did not pan out for First Man. First Man immediately sunk to the bottom, and the river was something he just thrashed with. And he got tossed back up onto shore, and he goes, Ah, well that didn't do it. So he looks around, and he sees that this dirt stuff is kind of hard, so he goes, I know. I'm going to put dirt in there. So he goes and he grabs his handfuls of dirt and he's running and he's throwing them into the river. And they're just getting pushed away. And he goes, yeah, that's not going to do the trick either. All right. So then he sees these bigger things, these heavy rocks. And he goes, that might work. Rocks might work. So he runs up and he starts grabbing rocks and he's rolling them into the river. They just sink straight down. And I don't know how I'm going to get to grandmother, whatever grandmother is over there. And so he, he sits down and he starts thinking. He goes, what could I do? What could I do? And as he's sitting there thinking, he sees some little twigs and leaves floating by. And then he sees little pebbles inside the water. And he says, ah, some things go on the top of this and other things don't go on the top. Okay. And he waits a little bit longer and then he sees a log. And on top of that log is a bird. It's floating down there. And he goes, Aha! I can do that. I will get a log. So he goes and he gets a log and he runs it down the river and he plops it in. He sits on it and sinks straight to the bottom. <laughs> but he felt it pushing up a little bit. And he goes, Two logs. I need two logs. So he runs back up and he gets a second log and he brings it down to the river and he sits on the two of them together sinks right down again, but it was a little bit stronger. So he goes, three, forget it, more logs, I need more logs. So he runs up the hill and he grabs a couple more logs and he drags them down, he puts them side by side, he 
pushes him in the river, and he sits on him. But they all start floating apart, and then he starts falling in between the logs. He's like, how am I going to get across? I've got to put him together. And he's looking around, he's looking around, and he sees a vine that's hanging off the branches of some trees nearby, and he grabs this vine, and he just starts wrapping it in between these logs. He bundles them all together, and then he sits on it, and he kind of tests it, and pushes himself out, pushes himself out, and it stays together. He goes, ah, I found it. I can float, but I want to get over there. So he goes back in, and he goes, I need something to push myself. So he finds a really long stick, and he uses that to propel his little raft across the river. And when he gets there, it doesn't take him long, because Grandmother's Lodge is pretty close, and he shows up, and he pounds on the door, and Grandmother says, Oh, grandson, come in. I've been waiting for you. She so opens the door and she goes, Come, sit down. Have some corn soup. Tell me about your day. And so he looks at grandmother and he's so excited that he forgets to eat his soup at first. He just spouts out everything about finding Mao Shop and him working on this thing that could fly and about how he ran to the river and figured out how to get across it. And he said, But anyway, this isn't why I'm here, grandmother. Mao Shop told me to come to you to find out what I'm supposed to do here on this planet. And she smiled and she says, well, today was your first lesson. She said, you see, as soon as you heard about me, your heart told you to come and find me because you knew that you had to see me for some reason. I'm your grandma. And he said, she goes, but your mind helped you figure out how to get to me. And that's where the lesson is. Your heart gives you the direction that you need to follow, but your mind helps you process how to follow the direction of your heart. It's never the other way around. You always want to use your mind to follow the direction of your heart, because the mind has logic and wonderful thinking, but the heart, the heart has love and beauty, and that's the language of God. That's the story of First Man, Aho. Uh Aho. -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you all for a wonderful day. We will see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning.